You said music? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. Whenever y'all are ready. Rolling? Mm -hmm. Okay. Marty, it's such a joy to say welcome to Dallas. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Because every time I've talked with you, we've been, well, the first time was uh, in uh, Tucson. Right, for Three Amigos. Three Amigos. And then later, once in Acapulco. Right. Your luck. Yes. And Los Angeles and New York and I think even Canada. I yeah, think in Toronto, Toronto, I think. Well, yeah, yes. all over. Yes. But never Dallas. So we've I've come to you this time. Here. Yeah. Yes. And of course, you're here to be with the Dallas Symphony Pops. Dallas Symphony Pops, uh, Friday at 8, Saturday at 8, and Sunday at 2.30. Oh, you're good. I know. You're good. I know. I'm an old pro. You do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them don't even know which city they're in. I know. Or which symphony. Well, what about performing with symphony orchestras? Do they intimidate you? You know, I, I actually adore it. I think it is because um, the show is, is really fun. The first act is all, you know, improv and Broadway tunes and dancing and running around. It's like a party, you know, and act two is Ed Grimley doing Peter and the Wolf. So, I mean, it all seems to be kind of, uh, again, like a party. And I bring people up on stage and teach them the Three Amigos salute. It's all very loose, so it's fun. <laughs> And, and what's great about symphonies is you're in the greatest halls and the most acoustically beautifully uh, designed halls imaginable. So I enjoy it. And as a kid, I grew up, my father was the president of the Hamilton Philharmonic, and my mother was the first female concert master in North America of a symphony. So I grew up as a kid, you know, uh, when I was seven years old, I narrated Peter and the Wolf. Really? Yeah. Do you read music? Um, I play piano. I read a little music. I wouldn't say I'm ecstatic. <laughs> Need brilliant. <laughs> uh, so you, but you did study some music. Yes, I did. I took piano for many years. And we all had to. We had no choice in our family. How many children? Five. And I was the youngest. That explains a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It really is true. When you see the youngest of a big brood, they are either in a mental institution or they're just doing fine. And what do the others do? Oh, one's an anesthesiologist, one writes with me in comedy uh, for years, Michael. One is the vice president of Dover Industries, you know, they're all over. Will you bring a lot of your characters to this performance? Um, Irving Cohen, the old songwriter, shows up, uh, and Ed Grimley, and yeah, some of them, and, and, and a million voices. Is Catherine Hepburn. Catherine is the duck. No, the bird. She's the bird and Peter and the wolf. <laughs> and she flies. Hi, hello. Peter, get me the hell out of this tree. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you uh, make notes on the, on the score so that you don't forget which voice is which? I have cards with me. I get completely confused. But, you know, the more confused I get, it's kind of like Harpo Marx with the symphony. You know, the more confused I get, uh, the kind of... I think better it is. The more cacophony is out there. It, 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 to see a, something like symphony thrown in disarray is kind of fun. How do the conductors react to you? You know, they kind of uh, buckle up and go with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do you know Richard Kaufman? I do. Yeah. I do. Richard is great. He's fantastic, yeah. You'll join right in the fun. Yeah, yeah no, he's, he's, he's totally game for it all. <laughs> Let's talk about other facets of your career. What about this one-man Broadway show that you've been talking about? Right. We're going to do it um, in the fall of 2005. All right. Yeah. Uh, I have m many different titles. I haven't decided. One is called If I'd Saved, I Wouldn't Be Here. Uh, Sonny Von Bulow Unplugged. I don't know what we're going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Let freedom hum. I don't know. <laughs> That begs the question, what are you going to do up there? <laughs> you know, I, I do what I normally do. I just fake it for a couple hours. Some people are amazed when they hear from people like me that you're a great singer, and you do. You, you really have good pipes. Well, thanks. Um, well, you know, it's people think of you, uh, particularly in the United States, as one that you're either a movie guy or a TV guy or a stage guy. and. And Canadians, like the British, like to bop between all the mediums and do it all. So um, I 
have done musicals endlessly in New York, but you would, you may, one may not know that because New York is New York. And you've done a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. And you've never been pigeonholed because uh, you've played a 10-year-old in Clifford mm -hmm. and a simple wish you were a, a godmother. <laughs> <laughs> I think character, I, you know, a character actor, and that's what I am, is, is you know, has a uh, greater variety of roles and longer, often longer longevity, you know. When people come up to you, though, and uh, say, uh, oh, I loved you and so on, so what, referring to movies now, uh, which character do they mention most often? They'll mention Franck from Father of the Brides, and um, they'll mention Three Amigos, they'll mention Pure Luck, they'll mention Clifford, they'll mention Inner Space. It's a wide variety. But Franck, everybody loves Franck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Frank going to have a resurgence anytime soon? I don't think so. I think I don't think so. That, you know, we made those two movies, and that seemed like there you have it. it. It's it's hard to keep going back to the same well unless there's a great idea. I mean, repeating a character, uh, you know, often is a good idea if it's if you have a brand new idea that can make that character keep growing, and, and, but if it's just rehashing, then it's hard to know what you would do. Does Frank come into tonight's performance? Frank did not show up at all, no. Well, get him. All right, all right, <laughs> I gotta, gotta get the wig. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very special That's thing. a very good wig. <laughs> Uh, do you have movie, movies coming out? Anything? Yes, I have a movie called Jiminy Glick in Lollawood, which closes the Toronto Film Festival on September 18th, and then will be released in January. I can't wait. Yeah, it's very funny. You know, a Jiminy Glick kind of intimidates people like me, because <laughs> y you, you keep watching and you think, oh my gosh, did I ever do anything like that? No, no, no. Jiminy Glick is really just a satire of a moron with power. He could be running a high school, he could be a surgeon in the hospital, you know. It really isn't, um, uh, it isn't so much a satire of TV interviewer. That just happened to be what his job is. But now be honest, you've run into interviewers with some of those traits. Oh, absolutely. But I've also run into teachers with some of those traits and, and doctors with some of those traits, you know. That kind of uh, someone who's filled with themselves and gets everything basically wrong. I wanted to ask you about the movie that you did with John Ritter. What are your recollections of working with John Ritter? Oh, uh, how playful he was. It was a TV movie called Sunset Limousine. It was 1983, I think. And uh, I'd never met him, and he was so much fun. He, he, he immediately gave the impression uh, that you'd known him for a long time. You know, some people you meet and there's an immediate intimacy. And that's what he had uh, going for him. And I don't think anyone didn't love John. I think everyone adored him. So your, your number one memory of him is just how much fun he was. Yeah, playful, funny stories, goofing around. He was kind of that Jack Tripper guy, not taking life terribly seriously, um, uh, do anything for a laugh, f fall down, put lemons in his teeth, you know, just and, uh, and very smart. And it had this fascinating life, you know, his dad was Tex, and he had a kind of fascinating mother, and uh, he just uh, was a good, one of the great guys. And sometimes you meet people who have a public persona and they're not that, and that's sometimes disappointing or that sometimes you wish you hadn't met them. With John, he was exactly what you thought he'd be. Of all the movies you've made, and you've worked with some really great people, was there anybody that really uh, made you nervous to do a scene with them? At the beginning, I made a film with Nick Nolte, Three Fugitives. And at, f you know, at first, I was, because he was so kind of rough, and I didn't know if I could get in there or relate to him. But then I realized he was just the, the softest, sweetest guy in the world. It was just kind of the gruff act, you know? <laughs> To intimidate others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily you. Right. Well, Marty, I know you're on a, a tight schedule here today, but I do appreciate very much. Well, I'm a pleasure time. to see you. Nice to see you again. And uh, I look forward to tonight. I've been looking forward to this ever since they announced it. Oh, great. I think I was the first one on the press list. Okay, I have to talk to Marty. <laughs> <Shepard. laughs>
And um, I just wish you the best of luck and can't wait to see Jiminy Glick. Say the title again. Jiminy Glick in Lala Wood. In Lala Wood. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to Thank it. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Okay, now she's going to move the camera. Okay. To add. I'll ask and you start to answer and I'll look you up. Okay. Are you at all intimidated working with these? Are you at all intimidated when you're working with symphony musicians? Sometimes I am. Sometimes it's a little daunting, I would say, yes. Sometimes uh, you don't know what they're going to do, and sometimes you're a little frightened by their austere presence. <laughs> okay. Um, for tonight's, for these performances with the Dallas Symphony, you're doing Peter and the Wolf. Are you bringing a lot of your characters with you? Well, it's narrated by Ed Grimley, I must say. He will be the narrator. And then uh, Catherine Hepburn is, is the bird. And she talks about missing Spencer, even though he used to live in that nest with her. And uh, Betty Davis is the duck. You know, all these different characters. Uh. You've been talking about doing a one-man Broadway show. What's the status of that? Uh, we premiere in the fall of 2005. And uh, it's very exciting. I just have to create it. <laughs> That's all I have to do now at this point. No pressure. Many people are really, many people are really surprised when they hear that you're a good singer. You have great pipes. Well, thank you very much. Well, yeah, it's, you got to have to do all things if you're Canadian. Do you read music? Uh, a little bit, you know, my mother taught us to, you know, we all had to take the piano until we were 14 or something. Um, you seem never to be pigeonholed by your movie roles. Uh, Clifford, you're a 10 year old, a simple wish you're a godmother. <laughs> How do you avoid that? <laughs> well, just being a character actor, I think character actors, get a wide variety of things thrown at them, and they can be open to it all. What is your newest movie going to be? It's called Jiminy Glick in Lala Wood. And so what can we expect? Uh, it's Jiminy Glick goes to the Toronto Film Festival and all the characters that he meets there, and then he's involved in a murder, and it ultimately, is, we find out, is a David Lynch movie, and I play David Lynch as well. <laughs> <laughs> Does David Lynch know about this? No, he will. No, he does. He does. <laughs> He's fine with it. Does Jiminy Glick ever think about going on a diet? He has gone on a diet, yeah. He's, he's, um, he's skipping um, Lupper, which is his meal between lunch and supper. He's cut that out. See, when I do an interview with you, I'm a little bit intimidated because I think, oh my gosh, I hope I don't have any of the Jiminy Glick type of questions. <laughs> no, 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 Jiminy, Jiminy is a celebration of all morons with power, and that's not you. <laughs> you mean I don't have any power? <laughs> You're not a moron. I am a moron. No, 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 you reverse it. <laughs> <laughs> you did a movie with John Ritter what are your recollections of John Ritter? Oh, kind man, very sweet, very exactly who you thought he'd be. So your number one impression would be just an all-around fun guy? Yes, and, 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 and just what you think he'd be. Some people aren't, but he was. Okay, it should do it. Great. Wonderful. Nice to see you.